All right, our message this morning is entitled, Whoa, Lo, Go. My pastor years ago, with Paul Nouse, when I surrendered to the ministry, asked me one time years ago, never forget it, he said, what was Isaiah's horse's name? I said, well, Brother Nouse, I didn't know he had a horse. Yes, he did. And we're going to read what his horse's name is. Along about verse 5. Is me. Is me. Isaiah said, Woe is me. <laughs> Woe is me. <laughs> but if you look at it, that it should be the cry. Of all sinners, isn't it? Woe is me, for I'm undone. I, I like a whole lot being what the good Lord put me here for. Okay, Isaiah chapter 6, we'll begin reading with verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Now, God opened up heaven and let Isaiah peep in. Verse 2. Above it stood the seraphims or the angelic beings. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, or for two, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Host of the Lord moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from off the altar, and laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. Thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I. Isaiah said here am I. Send me. And he said. Go. And tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not, understand not. Make the heart of the people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long do you want me to go? He answered, until the city be wasted without inhabitant, and the house is without man, and the land be utterly desolate, as long as there's mankind, Amen. you're going to need to go. But I've chosen to use the thought of woe, 
low, and go. This is a record of God calling the prophet Isaiah to do a specific work. And that was the Lord's work, was it not? But the first thing Isaiah said when he saw God and he saw the, what was around the throne of God, he said, woe is me. And I'm done done. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. I'm a sinner, he said. And I dwell amongst a whole bunch of people that are sinners. Like myself. In Isaiah's day, things had gotten bad. Uh, unbelief was prevalent. The people were filled with unbelief. Nobody believed God. And folk, I want to remind you, to not believe something doesn't change it, does it? They lived in a day of unbelief. And the Lord warned Isaiah as he called him. He said, now these people are hardened hearts. And I got to tell you, folks, as we wrestle with a generation of today of unbelievers, remember that Isaiah did this likewise. We live in a day of unbelief. People are unconcerned about lost people. I prepared this message already. The mailman came yesterday and delivered this, and I'll just share just a few of the highlights of this little booklet. An average of 155,000 people slip into eternity each day. 155,000 people die per day. The vast majority of them are, aren't prepared to stand before God. They don't know His Son, Jesus Christ, who died to rescue them from their sin. And without the Bible, without Jesus, the Bible says they're lost, having no hope and without God. Ephesians 2.12. And the question is, is will we reach them with a gospel of peace before it's too late? Why are we having a soul winning seminar? In order to better to reach people for Christ. That's a lot of people dying per day, isn't it? And to read a little bit further, it was talking about the, the troubles of people in, in America and how many people on drugs and so forth, how many struggle with depression. In America, 47,000 people commit suicide each year because they feel no purpose, or they are literally struggling with depression. What it amounts to, folk, we are their hope. But Isaiah said, whoa. Whoa means to stop, doesn't it? Only horse ever I got on years ago. I'm not a cowboy. <laughs> but I had a cousin that put me on his horse, and I'd never ridden on a horse before. And uh, I didn't realize a horse has a certain language they understand. But the horse ran down through a bunch of 
woods and what have you and skinned me all up and I was hollering, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'd heard that much. But I didn't know about riding a horse. So folk, my tenure as a cowboy lasted about 15, 20 minutes. But I said, whoa. Well, Isaiah looked at his own condition. He said, whoa, stop. And then we come to the part where it says low. Low means to look, listen, get your attention. Whoa, stop, look, listen, and go. The angel said, to, Lo, Isaiah, your sins are forgiven because you've confessed them. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And I live in the midst of a people likewise. His sins were forgiven because he confessed them. This made his heart right with God. And folk, I got to tell you, a lot of God's children today need to get their heart right with God so they can see what's happening to our generation. The Lord said to Isaiah, Isaiah, I need somebody to go and tell the people. Whom shall I send? I said, Isaiah said, Lord, you know what you're getting? Here am I. Send me. Brother Daniel Day, who Brother Bobby tutored along, and he, he came and we baptized here, and then, and then the, we ordained him. This past week, he was over with his church over in Tennessee, mission work on the field in Kenya. And he sent a bunch of pictures of, what, of the poverty and everything there. And he said there that, that Kenya had changed his whole life when he looked on those things. And seen what they didn't have. Isaiah saw the need and he answered the call Isaiah made the decision to go no one else could do it for Isaiah but him God had a specific job for Isaiah tell you this much brother James Bostic I'm sitting right in front of me the Lord got a job for him hadn't he and brother I can't do it for you you got to do it yourself and that's what it was with Isaiah the Lord had something specific for him to do and folk I got to tell you this morning no one can take your place well, what God's called you to do. Isaiah could have said, Lord, the, all these people are unbelievers around here. They're not going to believe if I go tell them. But the Lord said, go anyway, Isaiah. Go anyway. He told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, if you don't go, I'm going to require their blood at your hand. But if you go and tell them, they can't say a prophet hadn't been among them. Isaiah could have offered that an excuse. Lord, these people are not going to listen. The Lord said go, didn't he? The Lord told Isaiah this. 
He told the church to go. We drive down the road. We get out and go knock on somebody's door. <laughs> Who's that? They come to the door. You say, friend, I'm here to tell you that you've got stage four cancer and you're terminal. They look back and say, well, what hospital or what doctor do you represent? Well, my friend, you may not have cancer, but you're terminal. Right. You're going to die. It's appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. What we're dealing with the souls that are going to live somewhere forever, ever, and ever. He said, well, I don't want to offend them. My friend, you're not going to offend them if they know the Lord. They'll be glad that you believe like they do. But on the other hand, you may be, you may be the very one that God preserved to go by and share with them. And we could say, Lord, it's no use. If people don't believe, they won't believe. But we live in a day where people are headed into everlasting darkness. And God's called you and me. To tell them there's a better way in life. That there's this thing called salvation. And it's free. Paid for. By the one that loves us and made us in his own image. And we say, as Isaiah said, Lord, you're my, but then he said, how long? You want me to go? Yeah, well, Isaiah, you can go ahead and retire when you get about 65. He didn't say that, did he? <laughs> There's no retirement from the work the Lord called us to do. The important thing is that we do what we got to do while we can. In the eternal ages to come, we'll meet people that we've come across a lifetime ago who want to thank us for sharing Christ with them. And folks, Eternity is a long, long time. But it can be a wonderful time, can it? Well, I'd say to you, my friend, lead your friends to the Lord that they might also share with the eternal ages. So simply put, Isaiah said, woe, and then he said, lo, and then it says, go. So, folks, if we're ever going to do it, it's time. We are going to be held accountable 